Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to the Hard Mode Challenge. In the last episode, we saw the birth of some of our very first warrior hybrids. The first and what will hopefully be our defensive line against the Baryenas themselves. We are going to slowly take over their island using their own genetics if possible. It would be great if we could even pull out things like the Baryena snow, then I don't think anything could stand in our way. We're already getting ready to potentially hunt down some Baryenas on this side of the island, thanks to Athena's strength. She's going to uh, lend little Piper and our Lilo a paw as they try to make their way all the way over to this very distant tree. Oh my gosh, so close to those skeleton ports too. Yeah, this is going to be a very interesting area for them to settle down. They know that there's a lot of potential here though, because this is where the bluebird is circling. So either there's some food up there for them to eat, or there might even be a brand new family to meet. Let's have them start making their way deeper into the grass. Hopefully we can uh, wrap our way around the shore to get there even faster. But we'll have to make sure we're sniffing around in the process, because we don't want to stumble blindly into the killer Baryena. So far, it looks like there's only bunnies on this side of the island. Oh, and the bluebird got something else. Right over this tree again. Very, very mysterious. So whatever is waiting for you guys is very, very close now. And I hope you two are prepared. It probably wasn't the best idea for them to leave poor Athena in the dust. Their hasty ways might end up being the end of them but we'll cross our fingers that nothing comes jumping out of the grass once we pass the turn. Their sisters, in the meantime, are taking up the duty of acorn collecting for now. We'll have Liana try to knock down some more acorns for her little sister to pick up too. That way they're all prepared, nice and trained, to uh, make their way toward a different tree as well. We're going to bring them up here to hopefully start a family with Grindylo and Barker. Since uh, they're some of our only males without the no paw, they would be most likely to have healthy babies. And so would Kiro, of course. Our brand new wanderer who seems to be quite the hunter. He's managed to uh, fish quite a few bunnies out of that tall grass, luring them closer with his soft and unassuming looks, and then pouncing on them from behind. But he has a bit of a different situation to deal with now, as we have a bear Yina looming down on our tribe again. So this guy has 14 days left on his lifespan, and we should hopefully be able to take him down with the warriors that we have on our side. Barker and Grindylo are no stranger to the Baryenas after all. They have uh, hunted down quite a few in their lifetime. We'll bring Grindylo next to the Baryena too to land in a few more good hits, and then we only need four more points of damage to take it down entirely. So Kiro, I think this would be an excellent way for you to actually show your stuff to our tribe. Show off your amazing strength as Pecan comes over to the side and picks up that meat that you left for him. We have little roots to dig up. We have Baryena meat to pick up on the next turn. I think we're doing a little bit better on the food supplies now. Oh, and it looks like we actually unlocked a new gene as well. Maybe that was the Cracker Jaw? I think that was uh, the next thing that was close to unlocking because of all of those acorns that we've been picking up. So that's good too. The Cracker Jaw is actually very valuable in this land because it gives us a way to pick up the acorns without sacrificing any of our strength, our claws and our Baryena genetics. That's why Sonya is so important too. So let's bring her over to this tree as well. We're going to want to uh, set her up as soon as possible because Kiro doesn't actually have very much longer on his lifespan. So as soon as she grows her last gem, she's going to be ready to start a little family of her own. Now Zara in the meantime, she's become something of a legendary hunter. She's taken down bunnies, she's taken down moles, so I'm sure she's looking forward to uh, finding some more snacks off in the grass. And she's found another berry bush too. Excellent, so we have another safe source of food to use out here. Well, for now, go ahead and uh, dig up some of the roots, 
and we'll have her clear out that grass too. As Bean unfortunately picks up this very lonely Dodomingo meat. It's only one piece, so it's not really going to offer us very much, but at least it gives him the chance to lay his Dodomingo's remains to rest. I'm sure he is feeling a little bit betrayed by his Baragina friend right now. He did not expect that Baragina to go a-charging after his family, of course. Sagittaria is having a good time collecting food, too. She must be preparing for new babies. We wanted to hold off just to be safe. But I think on the next turn, we'll be ready to return to our nests again. So let's zoom out to our explorers to see how these two are going to fare overnight. We'll see if any killer Baryinas happen to catch their scent. Now, so far, so good. I don't see uh, any dangers out in the tall grass this time. So it must actually be the uh, rain washing away their scent, making it a little bit harder for them to track. Meanwhile, it seems like our friendly Baryina is actually chasing after his daughter. Oh, that is adorable. He's making sure that Athena is safe, of course. She has been left all on her own, so uh, he doesn't want her to get too separated from the rest of the tribe. And in fact, let's have Piper go into the grass just to uh, light up the way for her and open up some new potential areas for families too. Our Lilo, as always, as the fearless scout, should probably hop right on top of that stump and gaze around the land to make sure that nothing is uh, coming their way. They just have little bunnies out in the distance. So honestly, I think we might actually be safe. Maybe uh, the killer Baryina really did just chase after that rogue, Seiko the Blind Wanderer, until uh, they ended up passing away. We can hope, at least. Now it looks like Biba and Liana are all grown up now, so with the final acorn in their pockets, we'll have them across the waves as well, just like their older siblings did before. They're probably a little bit sad to be leaving behind their island, but they know it's all for a good cause. They need to find a place where they'll be able to provide for their future babies too. And speaking of which, let's bring Sagittaria over to our friendly Baryina's side so she can breed with him again. And then we'll have her start making her way back to her nursery. I think we'll want her to use the permanent nest because they're closer to the uh, fruits. But she is all alone now. Now that her friendly Baryina is moving off toward uh, their daughter. I hope he's going to turn around again to keep her safe. The Baryinas do actually help out every now and then by catching food and by protecting us from enemies. But Zara, I guess it's a good thing that you set yourself up by this berry bush because that's a great way for you to collect food. She can't actually pick from the berry bush because of her deformed paw, but that hasn't stopped her from taking down bunnies left and right. We might actually leave her right here so she can stay well hidden. We'll bring Sonya up closer to the nest so she can pick up her acorns and get ready to start her own family. And then Kiro can come down to the nest too with all of that delicious Baryina meat in tow. Yeah, their babies are not going to be going hungry anytime soon. We'll have to see if we can play some of those uh, Baryina genetics into his mutation menu too. But for now, let's just get him all set up to have his first babies, as the rest of the males keep clearing out all of this grass. They even have, um, oh my gosh, yet again that terrified me. I was sure that was another unfriendly Baryina. The one drawback to having so many Baryinas in the tribe is that you run the risk of accidentally attacking one. But Grindilo knows that this is just a friendly, familiar face. And now he has a little a nest to use for his future meat too. We'll have Pecan go ahead and keep securing the borders. And then we should be just about ready to skip the turn. We'll actually leave Biba right on top of uh, her little stump here. Unless maybe we should bring her to the berry bush. I didn't realize she could jump all the way over here. That might actually be better because then she can pick up those berries before the bunnies do. And we'll have to keep an eye on this leech, too. It looks like he might be eyeing you up, Athena. Good thing you have uh, some friends keeping watch over you now. So even if the leech gets to you, you should be able to pick it off right away. Again, it looks like everything is very quiet out in the distance. 
so no killer berryinas to worry about yet. But we will have to pick up these berries before the bunnies get any closer. Good thing you were around to uh, keep an eye on that pesky little guy. Now Athena can finally join the explorers so they can get back to work and see what's waiting for them by that tree. We'll just have little Piper pick up the grass by that nest so somebody else should be able to uh, use it in the future. And then Arlilo, it's time for you to jump down from your throne. So once again, let's make sure that we're sniffing around in the grass as we wander closer. We have a little shell for Piper to collect, as long as it doesn't get swept away by the uh, current, of course. But yeah, so far, everything is very, very quiet out here. So I wonder if the bluebird may have actually, like, picked off all the families there. It seems like he's not too interested in that area anymore. In fact, he's far more interested in this tree now, where little Sonia is all grown up and ready to start a tiny little family of her own. So as far as their mutation menu goes, we will have to keep a very close eye on Kiro's terrible eyesight. Let's go ahead and place the normal eyes into his first slot. And then I guess for the second one, we could uh, try to maybe mutate a second Baryina Claw. Now that we have this on our side, we can uh, place it into the creatures without any Baryinas in their genetics. So we can have super, super strong babies ready to destroy the killer Baryinas in the grass. Sonya, meanwhile, is probably going to need the horns in her genetics. And then I guess we'll leave that second slot open just in case there's uh, something else that would be a little bit more beneficial in the future. We'll have uh, her breed with him, so he could potentially go and uh, pick some of those berries, as long as that really awful fertility doesn't get in the way. I almost forgot that his fertility is so very poor. We're going to have to keep an eye on that too. I don't believe we have any uh, fertility genetics to place into our mutation menus, just the really, really low ones right now. Strong babies won't do us any good after all if they can't continue little families of their own, so we'll just have to be cautious. Now Zara, I do actually believe you might have a little bunny trying to steal more of your berries. So let's have her dig up this root and then we'll jump her over to the back side of the berry bush to swipe up this greedy bunny. He was so greedy, in fact, that he didn't even notice Zara looming behind him. So now maybe we could have Bean come over this way and pick up that meat for us? Oh, and hello. You think that Pecan doesn't notice you, huh? Unfortunately, he's a little bit too weak to take down the bunnies. So maybe we'll want to have uh, his brothers go out there instead since I think it's going to take Biba and Liana a little bit longer to get to the tree. They're stopping by to chat with a Sagittaria after all, and it looks as if more bunnies are looking for berries to steal too. At least they're able to uh, guide her straight up to her nest, so she can have her baby on the next turn. Since her Baryina friend seems to be a little bit preoccupied, hopefully he'll be able to pick off that a bunny for us, so it won't steal any more of our food. But yeah, I guess it would be a good idea to bring Grindylo a little bit further into the grass. Grindylo should probably take yet another trip over to those medicines too. Somewhere that he is uh, very, very well accustomed to, thanks to all of his run-ins with the Baryinas. But he'll need a little bit of extra time on his lifespan to uh, have his children. So after we pass the day here, we'll have him start making his way over to the center of the territory. And it looks like everybody is okay, right? I didn't hear anybody get hurt overnight. So those killer Baryinas are still uh, steering clear of our tribe. They must know that we have many, many strong genetics on our side. Oh, look at this handsome guy. The cracker jaw again, but both of those claws. And the big body. Oh my gosh, the only thing he's missing are the uh, ram horns or the antlers. So he's taken up the role as our strongest baby of the tribe. He's our first male hybrid too. So hopefully we'll be able to uh, find somebody for him to breed with to pull out some of those more uh, unique genetics. But the next name on my list is Darkrai. 
So welcome to the tribe, little one. And then we'd best go back to our tree to see what the other baby looks like too. Our next generation of Baryena hybrids. And he has the claw to show for it at least, but he also has the running leg. So that means uh, not only is he going to be particularly strong, but he'll also be able to cover a little bit more ground than the rest of his siblings. And that's all thanks to Kiro's influence. So he would actually make a pretty good scout. Yeah, I guess we'll have to keep that in mind. Wait a second, frog toes? Oh my gosh, I didn't even realize that you had frog toes in your genetics. Oh, that is a little bit unfortunate. That's actually some terrible luck because they both had the normal hind legs first. So I guess this little guy won't be quite as fast as we were expecting. But the next name on my list for this little baby would be Webs, which is actually quite fitting thanks to uh, those little webbed toes. I like his gray mane too. He looks like he's uh, an old man already, a very, very old soul born to the tribe. Let's bring his mother down here to uh, pick up some of the acorns and to hopefully breed again with Kiro if we can get rid of these bunnies first. Go ahead and swipe that one up for us so somebody can uh, take care of that meat for you. And then we'll have you breed with Sonia. I think we should be safe to have another baby, right? I'm a little bit concerned because of the uh, food supplies. But since we're spreading out so much, and since we're in the position where we can actually take down the bunnies now, I think we might be okay. What did you uh, pick up that time? Was that actually our meat? Wait a second. Oh my gosh, Bean, were you too late? I think the bird actually stole our meat. Oh, so we're seeing it in action now. You guys have mentioned that these bluebirds sometimes swoop down and steal the meat from the ground. And now our tribe has seen it with their own eyes. So they know not to leave any uh, big bundles of meat unattended anymore. And in fact, Zara, you're going to have to try to hunt down some more food just to uh, make up for what we've lost. So we'll have Sonia hold off on having her next baby for now, and she can just go ahead and knock down all of those delicious acorns instead. As we bring Grindy Low back toward the medicines. Pecan, maybe you wouldn't mind lighting up the way, because I know Grindy Low can run, um, much faster than that. Oh my gosh! Okay, hello! How long have we had this little shadow just staring at us from the tall grass? That is a little bit creepy, I must say, Komi. I'm not sure how long you've been there, but I wish uh, you came out sooner to say hello. Oh, she has the stripes? Oh, I didn't even notice. It's really, really hard to see because they blend in so well with their fur. But I think you can just uh, barely glimpse them on her tail. It looks like she has brown stripes mixed with her black fur. So I guess that would be a good thing to bring into our tribe, because the stripes actually do increase their camouflage. And of course, that's why we didn't notice her before. She is very, very difficult to spot. So, uh, Grandilo, we still want you to make your way over to the medicine, but we'll have Pecan come over here and uh, hopefully invite little Komi to the tribe. She has some different immunity genes too, A, which I don't think we have anymore in our tribe, if we ever did to begin with. So hopefully she'll be able to find somebody to breed with, though we will need to watch out for those frog toes. Now, Barker, go ahead and uh, finish guiding your brother over to the medicine. He must be very, very shocked after our running into that rogue. But you're going to have to be on your best guard, just in case the killer Baryena is still sniffing around this area. This was about where we saw him before. And with the uh, rogue in our midst as well, maybe this was who he was following? After poor Seiko ended up succumbing to his claws. I can't imagine that Seiko would still be alive after all. That would be a quite the feat if she managed to escape the killer Baryena. But let's bring Komi out to meet the rest of the tribe. She'd probably prefer to stay by the water side anyway, so she can dip her little frog toes in to relax after hopping around all day long. I wonder if at this point it would be better just to bring Liana and Biba up toward the medicine stew? I mean, then at least they would be able to stick around for Sagittarius' sake, so she's not all alone. 
because once again, that uh, pesky Baryena seems to have disappeared on us. Is he still sitting in that tall grass, I wonder? Let's bring uh, Biba over here. No, he seems to have hightailed it out of this area. Oh, there you are, chasing after your daughter again, perhaps? He seems to be very much attached to little Athena. I guess he's just worried about her. But he doesn't have too much to worry about in all honesty. We know that Athena can take care of herself, and she can take care of all of her new friends too, if anything dangerous does come knocking on their door. They are so close to this tree now though. I think on the next turn they should be ready to uh, settle down underneath those branches, and hopefully pick up all of the new food there too. And hello, Barker. It looks like you've made another new friend. He must have been attracted toward you by uh, all that white fluff on top of your head. But I think it probably would be best to bring Liana and Biba straight up toward the medicines. So I have noticed that Biba has the antlers in her inactive traits. So I think she's the one that we're going to breed with Grindilo. Then uh, we'll have Liana hopefully breed with Barker and we'll see if maybe we can place the ram horns into her mutation menu. So hopefully their babies will be able to keep that crown. She at least should be able to uh, introduce she and her sister to the brothers, since she has a little bit more energy left. Oh, isn't this adorable? We can set Biba up right on the other side of this healing fruit. So they can uh, chat overnight, get to know each other, and hopefully they'll be ready to start a nice big family on the next turn. We should be able to have Sagittaria come over here and uh, pick off this mole too, as long as we have her make her move as soon as we pass the day. We'll have to make sure that uh, everybody is safe over here first. No Baryinas for them to go chasing after. And then, Sagittaria, you can go hunting for your little baby. It's time to show Darkrai how it's done. He has a big task ahead of him after all. A big destiny and one that he's sure not to take very lightly. Let's have him toddle his way out of the nest so he can explore this area too. And then we'll want to make sure that everybody's mutation menus are set up correctly over here. After Grindylow takes his medicine, so he has just a few more days to have babies. So all of these creatures do unfortunately suffer from that uh, short-sighted genetic in their inactive traits. So we might want to try to uh, nip that out now, just in case. I don't want our scouts uh, having trouble getting back home if they do get separated from the rest of the tribe. So that will sacrifice a little bit of their potential strength, but I feel like it's better for them to have healthier babies now. Barker, after all, should still be able to uh, place one of the claws into his mutation menu. And then Grindylo could probably do the same. Maybe we should place uh, the big nose into his second slot though, just to try to pull that into their line instead, because we need somebody to be able to sense the dangers. So Biba can scoot on over here, breed with Grindylo, and then uh, place down a nest by the rock, so at least that area is protected from any potential dangers. But oh, poor little Arlilo, it looks like you've caught the attention of a leech. So we know that leeches are living here. I guess uh, that's a start. Not exactly what we were hoping to find as we make our way underneath this tree. But at least we know that it's not completely abandoned. We have acorns absolutely everywhere for Piper to pick up. So I bet she is super, super excited to uh, get to work. But otherwise, aside from uh, the bunnies, of course, it seems like we don't have any creatures to take into our tribe. Now, Liana, you can go ahead and breed with Barker, and then she should be able to set up a nest as well, because thankfully now we have enough uh, nesting material to make all of these new places. Comey and Pecan actually make quite the pair out here. I think we'll have Pecan stick around a little bit longer, just to keep her company and dig up those roots. And now, since it should actually be Kiro's very last day, it might be a good time for uh, little Webs to hop his way out of the nest so he can make room for his mother. We'll have her crack open all of those acorns as Zara finally finds a replacement for the meat that the bluebirds stole. 
Excellent, and then Kiro can make sure that his family will still be well fed even after he's gone by knocking down all of those acorns for them to eat. Settling down underneath all of these trees has definitely helped us, and it'll help us even more as soon as a piper can continue her job too. But let's see what our babies over here by our little healer's glade are going to look like. Oh my gosh, nests full of derp snouts to carry out their father's legacies. Do they by any chance have uh, those bear yina claws? No, but it looks like uh, this one with the ram horns only has the runner's leg and the nimble fingers. So at least we know that she can still scoop up all of those berries, especially now that the rains have come. I wonder if that's why she's been given the nimble fingers, in fact. And this one too, with the double running legs? It must be a gift from Van Gear, because he knows we need more collectors too. So the next name on my list for the baby with the lovely crown would be Kate. And then this baby, who I just realized was actually named Ismi, after our founder. Very, very interesting. I wonder if there's any connection to the fact that she was born right by the healing fruits too. Since that was uh, what Ismi managed to stumble into with her family, I guess her spirit wasn't ready to uh, leave us alone. Maybe we'll have to see if we can work like uh, the mask back into her family when she has little babies of her own. But we'll rename her Toomey. So welcome to our tribe. I guess they're going to end up being the defenders of the healing fruits so nobody can uh, sneak in and try to steal them on us. Oh, wait a second. Is this our friendly Baryina? Okay, and it looks like he may have actually found some food for you to eat too. Oh, isn't that interesting, Zara? It seems as though our friendly Baryina might be trying to catch your eye. So again, we can't see his genetics, but I think uh, she might actually be safe to breed with him. So maybe we should do that in the next episode? See if we can start a little line of master hunters with the Baryina too? I think that uh, might actually be a good idea, especially now that we have a brand new baby born with double Baryina claws. Oh my gosh, and the big body on top of it, an eight in attack strength. It just keeps getting better and better. The next name on my list is Bambi which is kind of hilariously ironic, considering how strong and imposing he is. But he does kind of look like a little deer, I guess, at least in terms of coloring. But he's definitely not going to be as shy as his name might suggest. It is so good to see so many of our Baryina genetics surviving and thriving, though. I don't think it'll be much longer before we start seeing, like, actual hybrids, with the Baryina snout popping up in our nest, too. And that's when we'll be ready to truly go out and conquer the killer Baryinas. I feel like that has to be one of the major goals of this challenge. We have to be strong enough to take down every predator that stands in our way. So in the next episode, we'll see if Zara can start training her little family of hunters. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!